So the problem is we can't exactly answer that because volume can vary in intensity levels. Volume training simply means you're doing a lot of volume. Boom! Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click on the link in the description box below to sign up for the Tiger Fitness newsletter. Within a week of publishing this video, we will give out a $50 gift card to tigerfitness.com to one lucky person who does all of these steps. Boom! What's up everyone? Mark Lobliner, tigerfitness.com! Ah, ah, ah! CEO MTS Nutrition, yo! <laughs> a lot of people are in one camp or the other. High intensity interval training, AKA Dorian Yates, Mike Menser, one set to failure. A lot of people are volume. Weight is less relevant by total volume and you stimulate the muscle, you get blood flow going. Not gonna debate in this video, which is better for gains. I've done that ad nauseum. My opinion is as long as you're training intense, as long as you're focused, as long as you're in there kicking ass and taking names, as long as you enjoy it, you're consistent with it, you will make gains. However, which one is more prone to injuries? So the problem is we can't exactly answer that because volume can vary in intensity levels. Volume training simply means you're doing a lot of volume. I know some people who do volume training who still train 1RMs, still train 3RMs, who still do forced reps like they do in high intensity interval training. I have injured myself doing volume training. I have a slight injury, it's just knick-knacky pain bullshit. I have injured myself doing high intensity interval training. Bottom line is, well, it matters what you prefer. However, I will state that looking at both of them and assuming that volume is not taken to beyond failure and is not done in rep schemes below six reps, I will venture to guess that high intensity interval training will have more injury possibilities. However, you have to realize that the first three to five reps are on the person's own before they start utilizing forced reps, drop sets, and other methods of increasing the intensity of their set, okay? So you also look at high intensity, like Dorian, all high intensity, less volume, tons of injuries. Ronnie Coleman used volume but he also trained beyond failure and he did superhuman rates, weights. And he, you know, two hip replacements, backs, back surgeries. Ronnie's paid a torn lat, I believe. Ronnie's paid the ultimate price for this. Um, so here's the deal. You're gonna get more injuries in your 1RM to 3RM than any other thing. Thing is, a lot of these volume trainers will do a one to three RM and then do three to four extra four reps. Volume trainers normally will go for 8 to 12 reps if they're following volume training. Unless you're Ronnie Coleman, then you're fucking insane and you're doing a 1RM for 12 reps because Ronnie was that badass. So also the thing to realize, volume trainers are doing more volume and less rest. They're going to take, they're going to train six days a week, whereas a straight up hit guy is going to train three to four days a week, right? So there's more rest and recovery, more time to repair. So on that note, I would give the nod to high intensity having less um, in injuries. The answer is, there really isn't an answer. If you are training hard, if you are doing what Dorian espoused later in his career, which is controlled reps that you can do with perfect form, then you will abate or, or, or you know just avoid a lot of injuries. If you're doing volume training and you're doing eight to 12 reps controlled, not beyond failure, you'll prevent a lot of injuries. Another thing to look at is warm up. My warm up takes 20 to 30 minutes. I do hip movements, I do world's greatest stretch, I do for chest day, I'll do four sets, working up of cable crossovers or of pec deck just to make sure my joints are nice and loose. I do some band shoulder work. So how warmed up are these people? So the bottom line is I think they're both about equal. Just depends on one, how hard you're truly going and smart you're truly going. Two, how good you warm up. And three, how far you take it beyond that threshold and if your tendons and joints can hold up to what your muscles can. Anyway guys, what do you think? Comment down below. Which do you think is more dangerous? Comment down below and of course, Remember, if you comment on any article on TigerFitness.com, you get a reward point toward free stuff on the site, and that's not a game.